It has only been a few weeks since the last Ethereum hard fork, but, but here we are going to do it again. But why? Let's check it out. What is going on, savages? Hope you are all doing well and having a good day and all that stuff. I'm doing all right. Ethereum is already doing another hard fork, even after their recent Istanbul uh, fork just a few weeks ago. This is a somewhat unusual fork, but it's not really that controversial or anything. It really only has one purpose, uh, not too much to it at all. Basically, the fork is supposed to delay the Ice Age difficulty bomb built into Ethereum where the difficulty adjustment scheme works to force users onto a new proof of stake chain called Casper. At least that was the original intent. But this capability isn't ready yet. Casper is not ready yet. So here we are again, uh, needing to fork in a custom block time. It's looking like the fork will happen Wednesday, January 1st, 2020. Uh, for block and it's going to be on block number 9,200,000. Since the block time is actually variable, uh, it's hard to tell the exact date and time, but it will be on block 9,200,000, 920,000. There's a countdown timer here at uh, ethernodes.org. So it's looking like nine days at the time of this video. And Etherscan also has a countdown timer as well. You can also watch the upgrade, uh, watch the network upgrade in real time over on FDevOps. Uh, the info here you can see is uh, still referring to Istanbul, but it'll be updated sometime right before the upcoming fork. You can see right here they're talking about uh, December 7th and all that stuff. So this information will get updated uh, prior to the actual fork. The goal of this fork is to simply add in a custom block time to prevent further degradation of the network by increased transaction times, wait time, uh, transaction wait times that affect the transfer of value as well as decentralized apps that use the Ethereum network as their base. Uh, Ethereum block times are supposed to be between 10 and 19 seconds and they are currently increasing soon to reach 19 seconds or more if this network change isn't put into place. The fork is being called Muir Glacier. Muir Glacier. Uh, reason being the Muir Glaci Glacier, that's tough to say together, is a glacier in the United States that has been retreating over the past hundred years or so, from what I can tell. Uh, it, uh, so instead of Ice Age, they are retreating the block times back, decreasing them, prolonging the Ice Age. Get it? So that's why they came up with this code name of Muir Glacier. So it's kind of neat. So, you know, the actual name of the fork actually has a meaning, right? That's neat. This will be the third time that this type of custom block time uh, change has been implemented into the network. You can see here in 2017 and earlier, this was 2017 and then earlier this year. So we're already doing it again. You can see what they're trying to prevent here. See how we're on the uptrend here for block times. Uh, started out, you know, at, at a nice 13 second down here. And then now we're creeping up on 17, it looked like, I think, yeah, above 17. And if you go to what to mine, you can see right here, it's, you know, it matches basically uh, the block time that we were looking at there on uh, Etherscan. So you can see what they're trying to prevent. And uh, so there you go. It's a good graphical representation of what's going on. So as Ethereum supporters or holders, what exactly do we need to do? Well, miners don't need to do anything, uh, really. The exchange accounts, if you have an exchange account that has 
uh, Ethereum. You don't have to do anything. Uh, holders don't really have to do anything if you've got a hardware wallet or anything like that. Uh, the people that do have to worry about this, <coughs> um, oh, but actually back to the exchange and hold and miners, uh, and actually wallets, you know, different uh, types of wallets. If you, you know, depending on your specific wallet or your situ situation with the exchange, which exchange you're using, there's hundreds or thousands of them and hundreds or hundreds of wallets. So it's hard to say, you know, you won't have any action at all, but you should follow whatever uh, guidance that those providers uh, give you. So, uh, you know, if you're concerned about it, if you're if you're like on a weird uh, wallet or exchange, then make sure you check with them to make sure that you don't have to do anything. If they're reputable, you know, they'll let you know if you need to do anything. But the important part here is that node operators do have some action and should upgrade their software clients to the latest version. If you're a node operator, you probably already know, know that and you probably know how to do it. Uh, a cool thing here though is that if you did miss the Istanbul fork, you can go straight to uh, Muir Glacier. So that is kind of cool. You don't have to go to Istanbul first, you can just go straight to this one. So what are your thoughts on this Ethereum fork? Would you would you like to see them hurry up and maybe get to proof of stake and stop doing all these little stop gaps and these little fixes? Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about what's going on with the Ethereum network. And if you found this video useful or entertaining, please be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I go live a lot, so that notification notification bell is kind of important. It'll let you know whenever I'm live and whatnot, so uh, that is kind of cool. Be sure you do that. And that's all I got for today. Pretty short video, probably my shortest video ever. Stay savage, everybody.